Hi everyone, we're going to get started. Fatina El Masri, PhD, is a senior financial analyst at FDIC. She is a data scientist with many years of experience in financial engineering, applied statistics, large complex data, and quantitative risk modeling and management, including market, credit, and operational risk. For her computational science and informatics PhD disserta dissertation research at GMU, she used Python and agent-based models to study the stability of the banking network and simulate 63 million records to identify instability conditions for failing banks. While Fatina was working for an assignment with the Royal Australian Navy, she managed a proof of concept artificial intelligence project for the Australian Maritime Warfare Center using IBM Watson, Watson Explorer, and Blue Prism for natural language processing, robotic process automation, and video analytics. She coded Python and TensorFlow for video analytics and provided oversight management of the RPA contract to automate processes. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I know that like it's after sweet and etc., so you might be a little bit sleepy, but I'm gonna put you in an exercise, and that exercise will take five minutes, and that exercise will explain to you what the agent-based model is. Agent-based model is is a like you know internet work, or actually it's part of the social complexity science, and it's applied to many many fields. So I would like, if you don't mind, to stand up. Okay, and I want, to de I want you to divide it into two parties. <coughs> one party is the seller, one party is the buyer. And I want you to be just partner, two of two. I have $10, but I'm not sure if I have more. I'm not sure if, uh, if I have 10 parties. But what happened, imagine that you are in a fish market and you want to buy a fish in, a, in Nice, in France. And what happened, you are just trading to buy the fish. So the seller wants to sell the fish, and the buyer wants to buy the fish, and you have one dollar. The, the seller will have some price in mind, and the buyer have a, some price in mind, I mean within one dollar. And I would like you to see, sometimes the transaction works, sometimes it does not. So if you come to a, a, an agreement, I would like you to come here, the buyer and seller. If you don't, you don't have to come in agreement. You just put aside. Do you understand the exercise? OK, please start. We have, if, you don't, if you have a question, please let me know. So you're going to give us money and then what? I have $10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, providing you give it back to me because okay. I brought it. So I want each buyer and seller to get $1 because you have $1. I mean, of course, like I don't have exchange, but you agree for you 50 cents. OK, I'm sorry. All right, so you have $1 in mind, so you have like you can buy the fish for 50 cents, 75 cents, depends, okay? okay? Each one of you guys, like each couple, okay? And sometimes the transaction works, sometimes the transaction does not work. Like for example, uh, Sam, can I, I will give you just a quick exercise, okay? Just to say, uh, you can sit down and after that. It's, I hope you don't mind, like, but I want you to understand the zero intelligent <laughs> trading. That's what we call it. Like, uh, um, I have, like, I have in mind. I want. I am the seller. She's the buyer, right? Like, we want to. She wants to buy the fish from me, and I want to sell her the fish. So let's start with. I have a price in mind that I can go the maximum, or I mean the minimum that I can go, and I have maximum, of course. And she's got the maximum and the minimum. Okay. So let's start. You are coming to me to buy a fish. Okay. Can I buy this fish for thirty cents? No, that's too cheap. I cannot sell it to you. You know, I, I work very hard. You know, I worked in the ocean and it's like I cannot. I, don't, I know, but I don't have much more. Maybe like 35. No, 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 no. Still it's too cheap. Come on. Like, you know, I have to, kids to feed. I don't have any money, though. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you have a great money. You are in Boston. They are very rich. How much will you sell it to me for? Well, I have some range in mind, but you have to go a little bit higher. <laughs> 40 cents. Okay, no, 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 not, well, not How yet. much are you going to spend? Well, I can go, I have something in mind, but if you can go a little bit up. Can you tell me what you have in mind? Well, I have a range between 60 to 65. 60 might be too high for me. What about 50? Um, Okay, let's go 55. Okay, deal. <laughs> Thank you. So that's what I was going to go with the exercise. I mean, you can do it, but we don't have to now. It's okay. So, <laughs> 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 so
So this is the zero <coughs> intelligent trading. And zero intelligent trading, it's a trading between buyer and seller. But what happened, it's not deterministic, it's very, very dynamic. So it's just lots of dynamic things. So part of that, I'm going to start explaining about my dissertation that it is applied from agent-based modeling. And uh, by the way, I, yes, I work in FDIC, but I don't represent FDIC because FDIC is different. So I'm just presenting myself and I'm presenting my dissertation. That's for disclaimer. Okay, as you might know, we have the crisis in 2008. Uh, we have so many banks fail. Oh. So many big banks fail. So the, the number of the banks start really, really high racking. And in 2010, you would not believe how work, how much work we had, especially with FDIC. I mean, like when we were in FDIC, it's like one after the other, one after the other. There were lots of unregulated. There is lots of like documented and undocumented mortgages. So it's just like there is lots of factor. But I'm going to talk about the contagion and cascading effect of the network. They are the factor, the main factor in the network that it happened for the those banks to fail you know, how it happened with the network, how it happened with the contagion. So what happened, the, the network, uh, the contagion and cascading, they are part of the network. As I said, it's parts of the agent-based model. And there are, th there are some kind of behavior. And those things, the contagion and cascading, they are kind of a game theory. So what happened, it's just like, it happened not only in the financial industry, it happened in many, many sciences but I'm um, to get to the financial industry. So what happened is like, you know, the calculation, as I said, the calculation for the collective as a whole system, it's a not, it's not determining, and it's not like a, a like in one formula. It's not an equation. It's very, very much dynamic. So when you have the dynamic that it will be introduced a complexity for the system. So it will require some collective as a whole intelligent system and then interactive between the system and there is some state transition. It does transition from one stable to unstable or to the tipping point where it fails. So we have the network-based modeling. It is, consists of nodes and edges. In my exercise, the nodes are the banks and the edges, they are the link. And I apply the agent-based model. They are allowing the bank to expose to various risk between the network and they have a potential tipping point from failing to non-failing or vice versa. Go ahead. Uh, so how did you determine the structure of the network in the very beginning? Uh, what do you mean? Like you are start with a fully connected network or you assume some kind of capacity to avoid to the or something like that? Well, I'm going to explain in the model later but if you don't mind to put the question at the end of the presentation but i will explain more and when you have a question i will answer it at the end of the to, and, uh, and at the end of the presentation so what i've done like you know you've got the node as the banks and the edges they are the link between the banks so what happened if you've got and i use agency matrix where you've got the rows they are the lending money and the and the columns, they are receiving money. For example, we have few banks here. We've got five banks, and they are matrix of five multiplied by five. And what happened, you've got bank one, it just lend money to bank two. And you've got bank two, lend money to bank four, but let bank four give money back to bank two. And this is randomly chosen, so it's not necessary that it have, if bank one gave bank two, it's not necessary that bank two give money bank back to one. So it's just very asymmetric. And what happened when you've got the connectivity between the banks, that means I'm giving money to this bank. I'm not sure if this money is going to come back or not. So that's why, and if it does not come back, that means the bank could be on the edge of failure. OK? So with the cascading effect, what happened, it's just like uh, I, I took some parameters with that. And what happened with the cascading, it was a liquidity shock. With the liquidity shock, that means the bank it does not have enough money to be able to be stable. And as, as I said, it's like if the bank just give money to the other bank and that bank did not give back, then it's just going to be unstable. 
And what happens, the cascading effect, it's like a propagating. For example, if you have a, a stone and you throw it in the water, and you can see the waving effect of those water. The same with the bank, it's just like one bank will affect to the other circle of bank. We have, for example, the interbank connectivity, such as Washington Mutual, Lehman Brothers, as you might know, in 2000, end of 2007, and we've got Wachovia in 2010. And also the cascading where you've got the spreading from one bank to another. So it's just like, you know, it's just uh, one, I mean, few, few banks, it just affects the other banks, and few other banks affect the other banks. So it's like a circle. And then the behavior, I find out that when you have too big to fail bank, where it will be it just validated for the Asian base model, it has the cascading effect. Also, we find out too connected to fail. So if we have the matrix of the parameters of those matrix, they are too connected to, fer to fail, we have the cascading effect. And as a result, when we have too connectivity of those banks, so there is like too many connectivity of those banks, then it will arrive to a very big shock system. That means if a bank cannot pay the other bank and the other bank cannot pay, so it can be affecting the whole system as a systemic risk. So part of that. Now the cascading. For example, I mean contagion, I'm sorry. The contagion, if we have a disease, if we have a rural area, for example, it has a disease, and maybe one kid has a virus and could affect another kid, for example, from the school, and that area is like, you know, that disease spread within this area. It's not necessary that this disease, it does go to the other area or to the other suburb. The same things, I took the epidemic disease from that, from the banking uh, industry as well. So what happened with the banking where they have the low credit risk or low, I mean high credit risk where you've got, you know, high risk of credit. So that will be affected as a disease or epidemic disease between the banks. So we, uh, I will explain a little bit later in the study, but what happened when you've got those epidemic disease, I, I took it or I make the analogy between that and you've got the rural area banks. So what happened, rural area bank, you know, some, some of them they call it community banks. For example, grandma or grandfather, they have this bank, I mean, they are dealing with bank for many, many years. And then you will go like, you know, you will have the same account with this bank or you, your father or mother have the same. So what happened, and uh, those banks, for example, um, Let's suppose in rural area, I'm not sure about New York, but you know, if you take different areas, so they are connected with the, with the other bank that they are nearby to them. So what happens, the borrowing and lending could be geo, geo, geospatially, it will be like nearer to those bank. So that's why if one bank fail from that, it's not enough to be able to resist for the other bank. So that's why it's getting into the contagion. So that's why we prove that too small to fail for those banks that is similar to the epidemic disease. Okay, and as, a, as I said, for example, as you might say, the cascading, it, it's like a womb, just like network womb. If you have a problem with the network, it just affects, you know, it, it does go from one node to another. And actually, sometimes the transition from node A, it does slowly, slowly go to node B, and this is part of the cascading. So you have the propagation, the shock wave propagation for those, and it does show how the individual weakness of those bank. And contagion, as I said, is like you've got phishing in the company, and you've got like, if some people, they might click on that phishing, some people that not. But what happened, it could be like this area is has deep epidemic disease, it's going to be different to this area. So this network is different to this network, and they are not connected. So they are similar to the epidemic disease, and that's why you've got number of clearer, it could be, it's just like affecting on that network. Okay, uh, answering about this, what happened, what I did, I did, I did simulate 63 million of banks, okay, and I took, I took the equity, equity and liability, and I've, I've done the asset, you know, for those banks, and what happened, I took the two factors. You've got the road, the connectivity, 
and you've got uh, the fraction or, or the risk exposure of those banks. So I took for those banks and I took uh, really, I applied three distribution, one of them normal distribution, uniform distribution, and zip up distribution. And I applied for 63 million records and with different metrics. The third Pardon? The third zip up, which is inverse power, oh. inverse power distribution. So then after that, I recalculate, like when you've got borrowing and lending, borrowing and lending between the and bank, that means every transaction, that equity and liability change. You know, like, for, as I, as like you know, if we have, if you borrow, for example, 100,000, and what happened, you give like 75,000 for the other party, and then you will have 25,000 you're not necessary to give the other 25,000 to the other bank because this is the threshold you can do. And if you give it to the other bank, you're going to fail. So that's why I made the threshold. But what happened, the row is the connectivity between the banks, different banks, mm -hmm. and the F means that the risk exposure that that bank could give. And with that, I did the simulation with the liquidity coverage ratio. And then I made this threshold that means if the bank fails, I will do it as one. And after the whole you know, transaction, and if the fa bank fails, that means I'll put it as zero. And then I'll go back. So I just like iterative process that it will make a simulation between borrowing and lending. And in real life, I have, uh, I have validated actually the information. I took the 6,000 active banks as we have in the United States. And I don't have information, I mean, we do have information, but I cannot have access to the information of the failing bank. So what happened in, um, in, uh, in Europe, there are some banks that you will be able to see the interbanking industries, you will be able to see the transaction of those banks that they're giving, lending, or borrowing. But in America, um, uh, it's hidden because they don't want to see that because if you see that, you might be able to find out that this bank is on the edge of failing. And because people panic if they, have, if they know that this bank is going to fail, I'm saying, oh my god, I have money in this bank. I'm so afraid that you know, they not give it back to me. But in fact, actually, FDIC, they have, like as you might see, that everyone in different bank is up to 250000 so the best thing is if you are a millionaire, and I wish you will be a millionaire, to be able to diversify it in different banks. So don't put it in one bank. I hope I explained. So what happened with this simulation, what I did, as I said, I took the both of them. You've got the connectivity, and you've got the risk exposure measure. I did apply the uniform, normal, and zip up distribution. And with that, uh, was, I was be able to do, as I said, 63 million records with different metrics. And what happened, you will see here, like, you know, almost, you know, not many, not many failures. So you will see that, like, on the left pane here, see here, and there, and here, you've got all of them. They are few, few banks that it's failed. Not many that is not failed. But you will see with the second, with the second one, you will see the other extreme here you will be able to see that they are really huge, huge fine bank here, you know? And what happened with the different distribution, this is where you find out where too connected to fail, too big to fail, and too small to fail. And the beautiful things about that, you will be able to see, I will explain in a second. Here, for example, with the normal distribution, you will see right away from, from non-failure right away to failure. So it just jumped. But when you've got too small to fail, you've got the bipolar, bimodular. Some of them will fail, some of them is not failed. So what happened, you've got like, you know, some kind of like right away as upward connectivity. And that's why we find the two connected to fail instability mode. Okay, with the zip F, with the inverse power, as I said, it's like you've got, you've got the first one, the tipping point. It's just right away from this one, just right away to jump, you know? Notice here, it's like not, it's still some, some, not, some banks not fail, but here it's just right away to fail. And what happened, this is where we find out, I mean, I did it with the 300, 
20 matrix, like 320 multiplied by 320. And then this is where we find the instability for that, which is too small to fail. And this is the evidence of the contagion. And in fact, I took the 6,000 active bank and I took the asset and liability. I mean, I, I look at uh, SNL, there is SNL.com, but now it's bought by SNP, uh, SRP, I believe. Uh, what happens, those information, they have all the information for the active bank, for the, their asset and liability and equity. So I took that and I, I applied this, uh, this uh, methodology to that and I find out that they are, they are in fact, they are applying the ZIPF, which is the inverse, inverse power, which is like right away. It's a, it's a hook. Okay, well, thank you very much. If you have any question now, you can ask. Thank you. Well, <laughs> we already we are already studying the too small to fail. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. And actually, we are call it community bank. So what happened at the moment? Um, the regulator they are studying the community bank, but they did not apply yet the too small to fail. But they are on the verge of doing that because I mean too small to fail. It in fact is happening. And actually, there is lots of banks uh, when you know there's some banks uh, over like hundred million. Some banks between 10 million to 100 million, and some banks there are in the billion. So the billion, they are the too big to fail. They are the huge company, I mean the corporation, if you want, or the huge banks. And those banks are very difficult to fail because what happened, they are backed up by lots of things. But the community bank or the small bank, they are failing, and special like, you know, because uh, sometimes they go, above what they can have and then when they have their connectivity between that this is where they start to fail both actually and i did actually for the last two months i've been doing the geospatial information about those men and it's fascinated fascinated by that because what happened sometimes uh, I'll give you an example and actually this is what I'm doing at the project imagine you are going to work you know and what happened like you will say like you you win a lot or for example one million and you say oh I want to diversify my money and I'm saying oh what's the bank that it's near me because I don't want to go out of my way to the bank either to withdraw money and etc so what happened you study the geospatial on the way of your address and what happened we'll find out how many accounts they are there and you'll find out how much the link between each addresses of that and then when you do study you find out that geo coding for yours. Uh, this is my information, as I said, it's not FDIC information, it's not, I, you know, I, that simulation, I did it as well for the same, yes. So I did it for like the same community, similar community, but within, uh, within like, um, uh, how to say, within like a circle. Um, so yeah, radius, and thank you very much. With the radius, like I did that. So what happened, we find out, uh, you know, that too small to fail is really, really happening. And actually, in fact, it did happen in uh, 1980, where you've got the saving and loan. Saving loan no, and yes, it happened, like where we have 30% of the banks fail at that time. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Yeah, I mean this study is, I mean I really love this study, but actually you can apply, uh, not necessarily the ABM, the Asian based model, you can apply it anywhere. It's not only for financial institution, you can apply it for health, you can apply it for different science, biostatistics, you can apply it for many things. So, you know, so I hope that the zero intelligence trading that you just learned something from the ABM. Yeah, I took this liquidity coverage ratio, but actually there is lots of risk. You've got the credit risk, market risk, and operation risk. And as you know, guys, like you've got the Basel III. It starts with Basel II, Basel 2.5, and Basel III, and there is lots of regulation for that. 
So the fact for us is like, you know, US Bank, they are really, really following the Basel III and they are just like checked, which is really great. And um, if you compare, but I'm talking about the big 16 banks, big, huge US 16 banks. I compare it to the European bank. Um, I did, where I did uh, 46 uh, global uh, systemic important banks and I did compare the US bank with the European bank. The US banks, they are really, really great with following the Basel III and they are passing it, which is really awesome. Yeah, I can, I can imagine, you know. I, I mean, there's lots of <coughs> banks, you can, you can see some stuff and some stuff, I mean, yes, I will I'll do that, probably I'll study it. Do you have any more questions? Well, thank you very much for everybody. Thank you.